All right, so welcome to a quick board breakdown of the ASUS AM1M-A. This is an AM1 motherboard for CPU, uh, AMD processors. So yeah, let's get right into it. VRMs, uh, first and foremost, is this. This is uh, one of ASUS's DigiPlus power designs. And in, even though it might look like a 2 plus 1, it's actually a uh, 1 plus 1. It even says so in the manual. So what that means is that these two uh, parts are completely, well, they don't work as two phases. It's only a single phase going through two sets of components. Uh, that being said, this is going to like 25 watt quad cores at low V cores. So does it really matter? No, but it would have been nice to have two phases because one phase really is just god awful. Um, speaking of these phases, they use the MOSFET, which is the M3054M, so let's get in there. The M, oh goodness, 3044M, that's what the MOSFETs that they use for uh, the CPU at any rate. For the memory, it does not say anything on the, on the chips, like you can see there's no writing of any sort. Here you can sort of make out like, no you can't actually, uh, there is no sort of telltale signs of anything on the memory so I'm assuming it's some ASUS thing. Now the voltage controller is uh, that controls both the memory and the uh, CPU VRMs is this. It is an ASUS ASP so let me just go in. A okay that doesn't make sense. ASP 11 Oh, and we'll just put the six over here. ASP eleven oh six. It's ASUS's like proprietary, um, a proprietary some proprietary Digi Plus VRM nonsense that they're doing. They're probably just taking a chip from Intersil or Fairchild or Texas Instruments or whatever, right? Um, so yeah, that doesn't even matter because honestly, this is an overclocking motherboard. But I couldn't get any information on this other than it's ASUS's proprietary. On these, I couldn't get any information. Uh, I think they're made, I, I don't even know who they're made by, other than that's just their name. So let's just move on. Oh, memory, that's right. Single phase, couldn't find any information, there's no branding. But I mean, yeah, uh, it's running on DDR3 by the way, that's important. So let's just like notate that, it's DDR3, so y'all know. Uh, let's go on to connectors. So this is a single connector for four pin for power, standard. 24 pin for motherboard power, that's fine. Um, and then let's scroll down here. This is your two six gigabit SATA. Um, what the heck? SATA, SATA three or SATA six gigabit per second ports. You only get two of them. That's all you're really gonna use though. Which means you're gonna get your full utilization out of a uh, SSD if you have one. Which would be really, I would highly recommend using an SSD with this because uh, the processor alone with the hard drive is very slow. Like in Windows 7, it just crawls. It's awful. I hate it. Um, unless you're going to be overclocking with this, which uh, if you switch into ID, let's say you are using a hard drive, which is, you're going to die of boredom, but... Um, <laughs> uh, after like it does its stuff, like you wait 10 minutes after it boots for the hard drive to chill out, then it'll be fine. But uh, for overclocking, for this you want to use uh, IDE mode for your hard drive. What that does is that it gives you a bunch more frequency um, uh, when you're overclocking. And I don't know why that is necessarily. It must be something to do with like hard drive controllers on this motherboard or it might just be like the CPU can't really deal with it. Might even be the chipset. But um, yeah, if you're using if you're using an SSD, just keep it on an HCI. That's fine. If you're using a hard drive and you're going for like, which if you're just doing this for overclocking to get some like scores on HW bot or hardware bot, um, then just yeah, IDE on a hard drive will get net you a few more hundred megahertz. Did for me anyway. Um, and there's a bunch of forum posts and guys who swear by this. So yeah, for overclocking, uh, keep that in mind. Let's just like. Those are parentheses, by the way. Um, okay. What else? What else can we get into? Yes, connectors. So, oh, God. 
connector. So this is a PCIe um, 2.0 by 16 or 3.0 by 8. You can tell that because it uh, says so in the manual, but it's also wired for by 8. So let's get in a little bit closer. Even though it says by 16 right there, it's only wired for a by 8 connection, which means it's the at like PCIe 3.0 by 8, but 2.0 by 16 is what it's going to be running at. Uh, effective speeds are similar, if not identical. So that's that. Um, you won't be get, which means uh, you won't be like you know fully have a bunch of headroom over your graphics card. But you probably, if you even use a graphics card with this for gaming, which I don't recommend, um, any graphics card you're gonna stick in here that's like in the same price bracket, you're gonna get full utilization. Don't even worry about it. This is fine, even though it's only like half bandwidth of uh, by 16 3.0. And then you have your uh, by ones. These are probably two, uh, 2.0 also. Uh, are there any other important connectors? Let's go over. Uh, yeah, before we get to like pins, uh, let's do the uh, I/O here. So here in the back, you have your t mainly like uh, keyboard. So you have your PS2 port, and then you have uh, 2.0. To, uh, 2.0 USB. Just... Great. And then here it even, see, it even says it. So that saves me the time of and trouble of uh, writing it out. Right here it says you have your HDMI, which is nice to see on this board. HDMI is really good to have. And then here you have your DVI and VGA uh, inputs. I haven't messed around with these too much. I assume that there isn't a performance penalty doing any of these. I mean, VGA. If you don't want, you'd rather go HDMI rather than any of these two, but um, it has all three for whatever monitor you want to use, which is cool. So yeah, there's that. That's your display out because the CPUs that run in here are mostly APUs. Uh, since this is AMD's low end, like one processor and one motherboard and one stick RAM, right? No graphics card necessary. Yeah, uh, those are there for that because it's mostly APUs. This is your USB 3.0, there's two ports of that. This is your um, Ethernet, this is Ethernet and USB. So again, it says you ha even says it, LAN and then USB 1.2. Up here it says USB 3.4, I wrote over that. Uh, so let's just USB 2.0 by 2 and then LAN, just to make it bigger. So that's that, and then here you just have your three audio, uh, which is you have um, your line in, line out, and then microphone. So that's that's ex yeah, self-explanatory. Your regular three, the green, red, and blue uh, of audio that you should have on motherboards. So yeah, that's the that's the I/O. It's pretty bare bones, but then again, this motherboard's forty bucks refurbished. So what do you want? Um, yeah, you're not going to get great quality out of this. So now let's go over pinned connectors. Uh, oh, before we do, this thing fucking is amazing. This LED here will show you whether the motherboard has power being sent to it or not. So let's say you plug in your power supply, you flip the switch on the back, and you have your 24 pin and CPU connected, or just 24 pin even. And that green light will come on, and then it'll say, which just tells you, hey, you finally got power to the board. Which is nice. Like it's kind of annoying if you have a see-through panel, but who's going to be putting this on a see-through panel, right? Like a case with a see-through panel. This is not a gaming gaming system. AM1 is not for gaming. Do not buy it for gaming. You heard it here. Followed my advice. I know what I'm talking about. Um, when it comes to that VRMs, I'm a little bit of a noob, but whatever. Yeah. So now pinned connectors. This is your uh, CPU four pin. Just kind of nice um, that they actually have four pin, and then even more surprising, you have a your other fan which is also a four pin. Uh, that's cool. It's nice to have two four pins, and you only have two on this board. Kind of a low amount, but whatever. It's a really cheapo motherboard, and this would probably be for like a rear exhaust fan, and then the top would just be for your CPU fan. Uh, so that's that. 3.0. Oh yes, front panel 3.0 connectivity. Not bad, not real, not bad at all to see from this motherboard. 
Oh, we forgot one thing for the slot. One huge thing. Oh, no. I already said this was DDR3. But, yeah. they. Oh, um, yes. This does not run in dual channel. This does not run in dual channel. There is no dual channel here. It's a single channel. So, you have channel 1, channel 2. Do not try to run dual channel. It really sucks that the CPUs can't support it and the motherboard doesn't have it because it would be a huge boon for those APUs to have faster memory. But, no. It's just not, the support just isn't there. So don't go out and buy two RAM sticks just specifically to have dual channel. There's no point. Just go with your single stick if you want. If you want more memory for, I don't know why you would on this, but if you want more memory, you can sure do that. It's not a problem. I'm just saying for performance, there there is no benefit to having two sticks. You're probably just going to lower your frequencies because it might be running in dual rank. Um, so yeah, or yeah, um, just just one stick is fine. It only runs in single runs in single channel. So yeah, that's all about that. Uh, important for you to know if you care. Okay, back to pins. Uh, pins over here. So this is just your front I/O. This is a small speaker thing, even though it's hard to see. This is a um, this is kind of like a clear CMOS. It's a clear RTC. Essentially, from what I understand, they do the same thing. So yeah, wh whatever. Um, kind of nice it's got a jumper there and that that's that's all yeah, that's about it here's your front panel audio this is your two front oh geez front panel USB 2.0 and perhaps USB 2.0 for a card reader or whatever you want com port serial and TPM so that that's it that's that's all there is to this motherboard um oh let's outline this interesting little nugget socket 721 which is also a am1 but um one thing about am1 and why this is also called socket 721 is that this is not a predecessor to am2 am2 plus am3 and am3 plus so what that means is that you won't have the same mounting holes which are missing if you noticed here and here that you would have for AM2 to AM3 Plus coolers. I um, made that mistake when buying, well, didn't make that mistake, but I didn't realize this, and I couldn't use my nice fancy cooler on this motherboard. Uh, that kind of sucks because I wanted to have a nice cooler because uh, I was overclocking this just for fun, do some hardware bot stuff. But yeah, that's it didn't work out. Um, the It just has like two holes here and here on opposite sides diagonally and your stock cooler honestly it's not gonna ramp up assuming you have like enough thermal paste and the right kind uh, it's not gonna ramp up it's not going to make a lot of noise it doesn't really matter this is a super low power system right it's running 25 watts on a Jaguar Cabini quad core I don't remember which one um, so yeah just just beware um, AM1 what it is it's AMD lowest of the low end so I just mentioned Super low power, it runs at like 1.3 gigahertz stock. Um, that's why this board is so lacking in features when it comes to power delivery, especially. Uh, it's 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 their lowest end board, really. It's AMD's lowest of the lowest end, and their slowest stuff. Uh, it's actually, with an SSD, it's surprisingly okay-ish at um, web browsing and you video playback sort of once I overclocked the hell out of the CP uh, out of the memory that is not the CPU once I really pushed the memory super hard um, it got better it got more responsive um, oh, because this board does have overclocking support like it's it's surprising but this board can OC like the BIOS does support it um, but yeah that's just just a quick note this is a different platform from FM or the other AM series that AMD has. So AM2 to AM4, this is not a predecessor. FM2, this is not really related. This is a different segment of the market, different product entirely. That is my leaving note. If you have any questions about the board, I would be more than happy to answer them. I love learning about uh, new things about the stuff I own. So please, if you have a question, leave it down in the comments. I will get to you I will answer it to the best of my ability if I've made any mistakes let me know that's about it uh, other than that <laughs>
before I leave, I do not recommend buying this board for a gaming rig. If you're going to game, get a Va get an Athlon 200G for like really cheap, Athlon 200GE and a B350 board. That, please, just do not buy this board unless your only plan is to tinker with it. Yeah, so with that, uh, best of luck to you.